Ty, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Uh, thanks for following, and if you're not, please subscribe to my channel, and uh, that way you get notifications when uh, a new video pops up. All right, so let's get started. This is a special request, which I do all the time, um, t with time permitting, of course, but uh, this is someone who follows uh, my account, and didn't know what to do with this SVG file. It looked a little bit different than what she normally sees on my videos. So I said, go ahead and send it over so that I can help you with it. So I'm always available for that um, uh, to, to help you guys out. So, all right, this cute little Frankenstein. Let's see what's going on. So the first thing that I noticed is it's just in four pieces, right? We've got the brown jacket. We have the green skin. We have a black background that looks empty, right? So we need to address that. And then we have like the, the gray, right? So it looks pretty simple. I actually like it. Okay, so I think the problem is, was the black background. So let me, um, let's just ungroup this so that I can break it apart so you can see what I'm talking about. So I haven't sized it or anything. This is just right now, we're just looking at pieces. So this is the gray, which the gray looks pretty good. I mean, the only thing that I would consider doing is, let's see, these pieces are big. Like, I don't think it would look good if they were bolted together. They look good as like individual screws. And then here's his, it's not a lot of pieces. I would probably keep all these pieces as they are except for maybe the shoes maybe i would weld a little piece right here so that the shoe is um is one whole piece but it's so minor all right let's look at the green the green is great it's the head is one piece so that means the face itself will be um uh, seamless and then the arms, okay, so the green, I mean, this is a really cool design. I, I definitely like it. All right, I'm just gonna move it right here so that we can kind of see it. Okay. Um, the jacket, the jacket might be a big problem because it's big, right? But I see a place where we can slice it. We can continue to slice it up here and that will make this one piece, slice it right here, that would make it one piece. And then th these two would become two pieces, but we don't need it to be two pieces because the arms are pretty big. All right, so let's move that aside and then let's talk about this black background. So this black background is super easy to fix. All you do is you go to contour and you click hide all once this changes because right now it says show all, but in a second when it populates, click hide all, it's gonna give us a solid black background. Oh, did I hit it too soon? Oh no, there it is, okay. So I think that was where she was running into the issue. So let's put this back over here and let's size this accordingly, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna upload and bring in a brand new one and let's resize it, okay? And I have a lot of fun projects to coming up. I have another off the map one right there. Okay, let's insert this Frankenstein And let's make him, I think he could be 30 inches without any issues. So let's make him 30 inches. So I just put in the height. I'm going to reduce this so that we could see it all without scrolling up and down, right? Okay, so we know what we need to do. We need to go to the black. We need to go to contour and hide all. And once that updates, we can exit out of it, which I think it just did. Okay, perfect, and it did, because we can see it right here. So let's ungroup this whole Frankenstein. Okay. 
So our gray pieces, I think we will be fine. The only thing we need to do right now is the gray is all one piece, right? So even though there's all these gaps, it's saying this one particular image is almost 18 inches wide and 28 inches high. So we're gonna slice apart these pieces so that they're individual pieces, like like the bolts are gonna be one piece, the necktie is gonna be one piece. So we, I brought in a square, I'm gonna make it really big and I'm just gonna start isolating the pieces. So here's the shoe and um, click slice. So when you're slicing, you can only slice two items at one time. So it's gonna be my square and then my image. So um, the square needs to cover whatever you're trying to isolate from the image. So, or take away from the image, right? So now the shoe is its own piece. Okay, the shoe is seven inches by 2.2. So it is something that we can cut on the Cricut and it would be seamless and it would look wonderful, right? And as well, all these pieces, we just need to separate them right now. So I'm gonna move the other shoe. I'm using the same square. Um, you just wanna make sure that your square completely covers the piece that you're trying to remove from the image. And the other important detail is that it only covers that that, um, that piece that we're trying to move out. So here's my other shoe. Um, and I'm gonna rotate my image a little bit. Let's see how big those pants are. Okay, so the pants are completely covered in my square. I'm gonna go down like this and slice. And Okay, so um, it's 12 inches wide. So I'm really curious. It didn't give me, um, oh, I guess it's gonna assume that we're gonna use like 24 inch cardstock, which we can um but this can cut on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock okay we're before i forget because i tend to forget these days um when you're sending this to the mat it's gonna say you need a 12 by 24 mat ignore it that's fine when you lay the piece of paper down you want to make sure that uh when you're looking at your at the design space page the make it page and it tells you where the end of it is make sure you put your cardstock you know it'll go past the 12 inch line i think but it's okay um it will still cut and it'll still be seamless we'll talk about that when we get there hopefully i'll remember okay so i'm deleting that piece um let's continue there's a little circle right there this is just what you need to do for off the mat unless you want to waste paper. So, and I'll show you in a second because, let's see. So this is, no, you can't because it's 13.4 by 13.2. So we're basically slicing out everything, right? Yeah, so here's my little dot. Um, see, so this little piece is completely covered and only that piece and I'm gonna slice. Um, you don't need your slice results because it comes out there. That piece is from here and then this piece is from the original piece. So you can just delete that. I can delete this little circle. I knew there was a circle there. <laughs> okay, this one, I'm gonna do the little bolt right there. I'm just grabbing it here, slice. Okay, I'm just gonna leave these two pieces together. Um, oh gosh, it's too long. Okay, I can't. So <laughs> I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna show you this, okay? So that's completely covered right here. You see, this is still in there, right? So that's, this is more than one piece right now because it's the square plus these pieces. But if your mouse only picks up the square on this side, 
and your other piece, it won't, it won't calculate that piece into the equation. So we can still slice. But if my mouse were to actually pick up that piece, then it would I would have more than two pieces selected and it won't let me slice. The slicing button down here will be grayed out, okay? All right, so I think we now finally have everything gray. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move this aside for now. Let's look at the arms. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate my square using the same square. Sorry. I'm gonna rotate it to a cleaner spot like that. And I'm gonna do this. Same thing, okay? So we're slicing apart the green. I'm dying to see how big all these pieces are. Did it not slice? What happened? Okay. Growing impatient. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get that arm in, and I can't. And remember, this piece is up here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I grab everything. You see, slicing is unavailable. But if I took my mouse and I grabbed it from down here and that piece, I didn't touch that, and now slicing is available. So you see how it just depends on what your mouse picks up. Okay, slice. Let's see what we have. This is such a cute thing for Halloween. I love it. I hope you guys make lots of off the mat characters for Halloween. It's like the perfect time for this kind of project. All the kids coming around to trick or treat and then you've got cute little characters. Okay, so this is eight inches by five. These are big pieces, you know, he's 30 inches. So he's, he's sizable and he's gonna look amazing. <laughs> All right, so let's get this little dude out there. Ah, oh, geez, let me undo that, sorry. And then we'll get the arm, and it looks like the whole face can be cut at one time. I'm hopeful that we don't have to um, slice up the face. So let's slice out the arm and then we'll see what we have. And I think we're almost done. Perfect, nine inches by 11 inches. We can cut that on one piece of cardstock. That's gonna look amazing. Here's my little foot. Piece. Delete this slice result. Here's my arm. Oops, I meant to grab this. Okay, so good. All right, let's see what we have. Um, so do we have just the black background left? Was there another color? Let's, this image looks, oh, I knew there was something else. Okay, here is the jacket. Okay, so the jacket is gonna be a little tricky. It's 16, 17 inches by almost 16 inches. So this little guy right here, I have a trick for this. We're gonna make it a deliberate seam. So sort of like um, the shoe, right? Instead of the shoe just being somewhat connected, this bottom piece has like, it's deliberately a second piece of the shoe. We're gonna make this sleeve a deliberate piece of its own. And we see that all the time, so it's, it's not gonna look weird. So what I do is I'm gonna go to my text and I, you need, if you don't have this downloaded, you should go download it. It's from Dafont, so that's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. The font that we're gonna look at is I Love Glitter. And I normally don't love this font because it's so overused. And I know I'm one to talk because I keep going back to my favorite fonts, but this one I feel like all Cricut users have it. Okay, what you wanna do is you want to type in, it's the square bracket, it's the, the key to the right of the letter P, okay? So when you type that in, it gives you this little squiggly line. And the reason why I like to use it is because you see this line, it's not perfectly straight. So if I went in and tried to use a rectangle, like a thin rectangle to slice out this piece, it's going to look 
it's gonna look a little out of place because everything has its little natural like slight curve to this jacket all of a sudden you have a straight piece it's gonna look weird so with this piece you can see like how thick it is it's a little bit thicker than this piece right so let me zoom in a little bit so that we can really see what we're what we're working on so here is a good um, example of this or um, view of this so you can see right now my line is too thick right so I'm going to unlock it and I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner to try to match my little swirl or swoosh with this and I feel like right now they look pretty comparable so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm gonna turn him this way and I'm kind of gonna use this right here oops hold on let me move I think we're good okay can you see me okay hold on let me move my face out of the way <laughs> all right so I'm gonna take this little guy and I kind of like the curve from here to here so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bring in a square and I'm gonna slice off this little piece that has the curve to it okay maybe like right here Nope, I picked up too many pieces. <gasps> Hold on. Let me move this over. Ah, it's not letting me pick it up for some reason. Okay, let me move this guy over. You know, you just, different ways of doing things, right? All right, let's slice this. Um, and maybe slice it. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Okay. And I'm going to slice it maybe like right around here. I'm just shortening my stick, okay? Because I want this middle area right here. Oops, jeez. Waiting for design space to catch up. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over. And kind of match it up to oops, I turned it over too much. Okay, you kind of see how that line looks really natural, right? Um, if we want to be really picky, I think it's just slightly over a little bit. Oh, I mean, you can get really picky here, but for me, like, I feel like even if it's not perfect and I'm going to make it just a tiny bit smaller for some reason, it feels like a little bit too big. I feel like that looks really good. So I'm gonna grab these two items and we're gonna slice. And I probably should have duplicated that, but that's okay. So I'm gonna delete this and move that, oh my God. Oh my God, it looks so good, <laughs> right? I mean, that totally looks like the designer that created this just did a sleeve, like, <clears throat> mind is blown. I love it. This piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it and I'm going to stick it in this side. Okay, so let's look at that. So I need to line it up a little bit. So I'm going to move it. Actually, I'm going to move it over a lot. I know now it's just like being picky okay I think that looks pretty good so I'm gonna come down on this side grab these two items and slice occasionally I have moments like this where it's like yes that was so good <laughs> all right let's get rid of all these pieces 
And then I'm going to bring this jacket over and you're going to see it. Dude, that looks good. <laughs> All right, let's look at this. I'm going to zoom out. Okay. And I'll put this jacket back on so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bring back everything because that would take forever, but let me upload and bring in the original Frankenstein so that you could see this. And the reason why, and I wish, you know what, things would be so much easier if I could just create my own SVG files because I would have created the jacket to be like this originally, right? Then it would be seamless and it would look amazing and we could do all these off the mat characters, right? But okay, <clears throat> we haven't done the white pieces because there's white, so it must be somewhere here. Um, just something that I noticed. Okay, seriously, check out the two jackets. I mean, this is, this is how you make 30 inches seamless, is you create a deliberate, I mean, that looks so good. <laughs> I'm like so excited for the person making this uh, this image because it's going to look amazing at 30 inches and it's going to be like, wait, how? Like, ev So let's talk about this. All the pieces, all the colored pieces are seamless, right? Because now the jacket's seamless. We All the green is going to fit. There's going to be no seams anywhere. The only seams that we're going to see are all the way at the edges in the black. So if you were, I mean, he's not really a scary character. If you wanted to, you can make, <coughs> excuse me, you can make the black um, by using black glitter cardstock. That will really mask the, I mean, the black is so minimal. Obviously, we're not going to slice his head off right here. It makes no sense. So that part's going to be seamless. Where you're going to see the seams are just at the edges and just a little bit because he's all colored pieces. So at 30 inches, he's gonna look amazing. And in fact, we could probably do this even a little bit bigger, maybe 40 inches. There's a possibility that you could go, you know, it, there. you definitely can go bigger. Um, but, oops, did I even check my jacket? Hold on, maybe we can't. All right, so the jacket. The jacket's so close together, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna break this up into three pieces. So I'm gonna use contour now. People ask me all the time, why do you slice sometimes and why do you contour sometimes? I slice when I can easily isolate the piece that I want to be separated from the other pieces, right? Like if you remember the green, look how far apart the green pieces are. I can easily put my square over the arm and isolate that arm. Here, there's a curve. It would be really hard for me to isolate this uh, sleeve by itself. So this is why I use contour. So contour, I'm separating into three pieces. That means I need three um, sets or three uh, copies of this image. So I'm gonna duplicate and that will give me, well, as soon as Design Space wants to give me the duplicate. Did I not click on it? Okay, I clicked on it again. Okay, here we go. So here's the second one and I'm gonna do one more. Okay. So now on each image, I'm going to go to contour and I'm going to hide the other pieces. So I'm going to click hide all and it's going to leave me this one arm. And the arm is 5.3 by 12.703. So I think we can fit this. Let's look at this. Yep. So you see how I twisted the, the arm? I didn't change the dimensions at all, but I just turned it and look, it's 11 by nine. I can cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So don't, um, don't be fooled that like when it's like this, that you need 12 by 12 or 12 by 24 cardstock. You don't, you still need to angle it and see. Okay. All right, let's go to this one and contour. We know we need the other arm. So you can click hide all, and then you can click on this in the picture. So I want this one. I don't want this one, so I'm just selecting it to remove it. And there's my other arm. So interesting that this arm is longer. Okay, so now we can get rid of the two arms on this one and see how big of a piece we have. So I'm just gonna click on it, click on it. I'm removing the two arms. 
we're left with the vest and the vest is eight by nine. Oh my god this guy is gonna look amazing okay um i'm missing my white pieces somewhere so let me delete this guy right we need to work on the white so let's scroll down the white has disappeared on us somewhere or crap i accidentally deleted it okay so this is why you should always size your characters by typing it in and this is what i mean so let's go back to upload i lost my white pieces right so i'm going to select it and insert it because if you eyeball it and you're just gonna like kind of make him big and he looks big enough if you make a mistake like i did you don't want to have to start all over right because if you were eyeballing it, you're like, okay, was he 28.8 inches, 28.82? Like, it's really hard to make all the pieces match up, right? But here, we know we did it at 30, so type in 30, and here he is. Um, oh, there, there is no white piece. Okay, so, um, The white pieces are the blank pieces, holy. Okay, so let me think about this. What do I need to do? Um, okay, so let's delete the green and just leave the black outline. This is what we need right here. This white, the teeth, and his socks, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna slice out a few things and we're gonna try to work with it there, okay? So let's do this. I'm slicing out the eyes right here. Um, just stick with me, because I think in the end you'll see what I'm trying to do. It's, uh, I know I need those white pieces to be exactly that shape because this is our black background. I'm just looking at the face, okay? So let me bring the face back over here so we can see what we're talking about. So the black that's gonna come through, I need the white to actually be the exact white pieces. So when you slice, do you see this gray piece right here? This is the white that I need. So because I sliced it like this, I can go to contour and I can hide everything and what I want are these two little eyes, right? And I'm gonna get rid of this. So, ta-da, my white pieces, right? Okay, so I'm gonna make them white and I'm gonna stick them over here. So you see, that's gonna be perfect, right? Okay, so same thing, we gotta go do it for the teeth. So we have the shape of the white, so we, you know, we have that, that's why I'm doing this. So now I'm gonna, Make sure that my teeth are within this square and I'm gonna grab the square and the image and slice. Okay, so here's my piece. I'm gonna go to contour. I'm gonna hide everything. All I want are these two little teeth but I need to get rid of this because when you click um, contour and you click hide all or wait, did I click hide all? No, I'm like, did I do this right? I did do it. When you click hide all, what happens is um, it will hide everything but one piece. And the reason is because if it did hide all all, the whole image would disappear, right? So it always defaults to leaving one piece. So here are my little teeth. I love it, I love it. Okay, so this is white. And I'm gonna leave these um, connected to each other because the eyes are the same way. So when we go to cut, I could do something like this and it wouldn't waste so much paper if that makes sense to you. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. Okay, last thing for the white are the socks. So let's go and, oops, I want my, clicked on the wrong button. I'm gonna go to shapes, get my square. Gonna make sure that my square covers the socks so that we can slice out the socks. Okay. And 
And as soon as it does it, okay, here we go. So now this guy, we can just delete, right? He's all mangled up. Ah, I deleted the wrong piece. Let me undo that real quick. Going too fast. Okay, um, this, this, deleting, delete. It's so funny, he has <laughs> little white socks, so cute. Okay, let's delete that on this one. Go to contour. And we only want the two two socks so we're gonna click hide all and i want this one and this one and i don't want this one there are two white socks oh my gosh i just love it okay so everything is done now we let's do this big piece so I created a grid of squares to slice this perfectly. And the reason why the grid of squares, um, and you can buy it on my website. So it's the uselesscrafter.com, but uh, let me upload it and show you. So it's an SVG file and I need to organize myself. I don't remember if I um, named it properly. So I'm gonna scroll to see it real quick. You see all my fun stuff. Okay, so I included in the purchase is both the three by three and the 12, uh, the six, four by four. That's what I meant. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna upload this one or insert it. And it's important to have these squares be completely flushed with each other because you don't want any gaps and you don't want any overlays when you're slicing up your black background. So I created this because it's easy to just do and plop in. Okay, now they come in attached all night or grouped all nine, right? Before you ungroup it, click on your image. So it's highlighted right now. You can tell it's highlighted over here. Go to position and put in whole numbers. So just round. 3.097 becomes 3, 12.9 becomes 13. The reason is if we wanna shift things around, it's really important to be on the grid exactly where you are so you can replicate your, you know, like if we need to do something, we can replicate, we can redo, we don't have to, you know, start all over again. And it doesn't look like it's moving. Why is that? Or did it move? Oh, it did, okay. Okay, so now I can ungroup. And then let's bring our little Frankenstein to the front. So click on him over here and arrange, send to the front. And let's see where we wanna slice it. Um, so do you see this? Like this is unnecessary to slice his head off right there when all of this is here. So that's pretty good. Okay, so I kind of like this. We want big pieces, right? What you don't want is something like this, where all of a sudden his ear, there is a small little piece that's hanging by itself that you need to glue or tape back together, okay? So I kind of like this, and this is actually a really good example of why we want things on the grid, because watch, I'm gonna get rid of this center one, I think, and what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna move this square over here. Okay, and I'm gonna go, because this is not perfect, um, there's gonna be gaps or overlays, but I know because everything is on a grid that I can round this to 20 and 35 and know that my squares are completely flushed with each other. So that's why I want you, before you ungroup your squares, to put it on an actual whole number so that we can do things like this, right? So now, I mean, his whole foot, there's gonna be no seams, right? So your seams are gonna be right here, which I think it's gonna be covered. I mean, everything, this thing is gonna look so good. All right, same thing with over here. I'm gonna put it really close to here and we want them flushed, right? So this is probably gonna be nine and 35 and I think we're all good. Ah, he's gonna be so good, I'm excited, okay. Um, let's start slicing. So I'm gonna slice one square and the image at a time. This project has brought me so much happiness. 
I feel like when you can create something flawlessly, like as perfect as it can be, it definitely deserves celebration. So thank you to the person who brought this project to my attention. I've had a lot of fun. Okay, uh, this is a glitch in the system. When something like this happens, just undo it. It's just acting weird. Go to another square and slice around it. Um, and sometimes just by slicing all the way around, we'll get to this part and by default, it will be detached because we've sliced everything else. So um, we'll see if that works. I feel like uh, nine out of 10 times when I do off the mat, I get a glitch when I'm doing the slicing of the, the big background. I think it was Carolyn. Sorry, I get so many requ requests um, that I have a hard time keeping track of the name, so I apologize. Okay. Um, dude, is that another glitch? Okay, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna try this one again. And then we're gonna to need to move him a little bit because I don't know if I've sliced everything, have I? Okay. Actually, I think I have, sli oh no, I haven't, okay. So let's slice this one and see if it works this time. Once I slice everything, I do like to move it out of the way and make sure that all my pieces look good and make sense which I mean, you know, we try to do that before we slice, right? But um, I like to move it out of the way and re-piece it together because it helps when you're piecing it together that you see a big square and you know where that goes. It seems obvious, but I'm telling you, when these pieces come out, sometimes I'm like, where does that even go? And then because it's black, if you use regular black cardstock, sometimes I can't tell if it's the top side or the bottom side, I may have flipped it, and then it definitely doesn't work out. So it's just easier to do it that way. So I'm gonna delete all of this. So we've got our black background. I love it, I love it. Um, okay, so let's save this sucker. in case I ever need to go back to it. And let's go to the Make It screen so I can show you what that looks like. So I am, if um, I'm not making this project, maybe I will come back and make it, but I would, if if I were to do this, I, I just, uh, you know, we manipulated the file in Design Space with the intention of using 12 by 12 cardstock. So don't, even though like this one says that we need to use, you know, a big old mat, don't worry about it. We'll get to it in a second. Just click okay here. Um, you can rearrange these pieces so that we're not wasting so much paper. So actually I would do something like, oops, hold on. Make sure that nothing is overlapping though, because then it would suck. <laughs> um, actually, maybe this will be better so see you can move these around now if we had sliced these apart then of course we could be super efficient right here but because I didn't this is why we're doing this right now so you can kind of see it would be better if these were sliced apart right because they would fit all in one row it would be a um, two inch by 12 uh, 12 inch piece of cardstock that could cut all the white but right now it's gonna take a little bit more because I can't figure this out right now. <laughs> My head's not thinking. All right, let's go to this one. Okay, so this one says it is a little bit too long, right? So here's a couple things that you can do. Um, you see that it's never gonna cut all the way to the top right here. So what I would do in this scenario is I, when I go to place my black cardstock on my you know, uh, 12 by 12 mat, I would have it extend past the 12 inch line by just a little bit because it won't cut up here. This whole thing will cut on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So you won't have any seams. Just make sure I would put it at like 
12 and a quarter. So like go past the 12 inch line and then it will cut perfectly. Or you could do this. I think we can twist this around diagonally and get it to be, oh yeah. So see if you twist this, right, then you'll be above the 12 inch line. The only thing is if you did it before, then we have this whole section that you can reuse for scrap paper. Here, the scrap paper is like a little bit more irregular, but you, I mean, you could twist this some more and see if we can be more efficient. So if we did something like this, then you would have like this piece right here that could be used as scrap paper for next time. All right, let's look at this, the next piece. I mean, you can make this a little bit, mm, no wait, I don't even know what I'm doing. It's pretty efficient as is, but I'm just being, oh no wait, no, that's better, right? Oh, see, all that fits. Um, just saying. <laughs> all right. Um, now, I do recommend using 12 by 24 mats because it's the cheapest mat you can buy in bulk. And so I always use it. But so for this, I would put two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock on my 12 by 24 mat. And then what I would do is I would twist these around like this so that it fits so it's on a 12 see this is now less than 10 inches right um see if we had separated this then i could probably fit one right here and then i could fit one on the bottom with this one twisted over so there is something to be said about I, you know, separating all your pieces when you can, because in this case, instead of using three sheets of cards, three sheets of the brown cardstock, I probably could have just done with two, right? Because now I need to move this to another map. So I'm gonna click on this and click on the three dots and move object. And I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna use the brown mat and it's gonna drop this piece onto a, a single brown mat for me. So I'm gonna twist this too to make sure that it fits on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Okay, all right, here are our black pieces. So this is all one, look at this one. This one's a gigantic piece. Um, all of these are big pieces. I don't think anything that we can do to consolidate. Here's our green. Um, see, I like to do this only because if you're using really nice green cardstock, you will now have like almost three inches by 12 to save a scrap and it's usable scrap. So let's look at this one. Um, yeah, this is fine. It is what it is here. And here's our brown piece. That's it so easy and this one's gonna look flawless amazing at 30 inches really so all right i hope that was helpful for carolyn for anyone else you can see like this was a really good tutorial um not because i did it but just for learning all the tips and tricks and like the hacks of design space i feel like we did a lot to manipulate this file to make it look perfect um but if you have a special request, I'm totally available for that. Uh, hopefully, like the only thing that is difficult for me is when you say, oh, I need it this weekend. Like I, my schedule doesn't really permit that. But if you have like a flexible time frame as to when you're going to do this project, I could totally help you with it. Okay. Have a great day. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Bye.